Well, hey, check it out, man. We got the brand new uh, DHP uh, Choppers T-shirt. You know what I'm saying? That was yeah. Four man Choppers, man. You know what I'm saying? The three bar rim. We celebrating three years. You know what I'm saying? Chopping it up right here on Dine East Podcast. That's what's up. A lot up. of y'all be asking, man. Hey, man, how can I support you? And I say, hey, man, just watch the show. And they say, man, how can I really support you? Hey, man, get a T-shirt right now. DineEastonWorld.com. You know what I'm saying? Black, smoke, gray, white. We got the hats. You know what I'm saying? All that. What's going down, man? It's your boy Donnie Houston. Hey, check it out, man. I got a uh, a new job opportunity for y'all, man. Something real live, man. Check it out. If you want to learn how to install the internet cables, a fire alarm, a security access system, you know what I'm saying? You need a new trade. You need an OSHA 10 or an OSHA 30 safety certification. Hey, man, they got you. Call Texas Training Center and Certifications at 281-962-0659 or simply go to www.ttcandc.com or on Instagram, tdcandc. You know what I'm saying? They located at 341 Columbia Memorial Parkway, Suite 341E, that's out in Kima, Texas, 77565. You know what I'm saying? They offer hands-on training for network cabling, low-voltage trade, telecommunications, structured cabling, voice and data. Hey, man, all that. Uh, voice over internet protocol, you know what I'm saying? Hey, man, no background check for training, man. Listen, call Texas Training Center and Certifications at 281-962-0659 or simply go to www.ttcandc.com. Subscribe to the Danny Houston Podcast, man. Did you did you record peeping me with Fat Pat and all of them in the studio? And all I, I I recorded. Now that was the funniest thing. I'm gonna tell you about that story. <laughs> Fat Pat was him and Kiki was two of the thotes in the screwed up <laughs> click to me. Um, he come up to me. He say, "Man, I I need you on a song." I said, "All right." You know, he had that old gorilla voice. Man, I need you on a song, baby. You know that that's what it did. I, I got a song called "Peeping Me." You feel me? I said, "All right." I said, he said, "Man, you gotta get on that." So I said, "Okay." So we go to the studio, and I heard the track, and it was a groove because I like grooves, and I heard it. I said, "Okay." He said, "Man, all thing I want you to do is just like you talking to a young lady and just say, you know." You, she peeping me. Why are you peeping me? I said, okay. I, I said, okay, cool. So they played the track, and he said, well, how would you say it? So I'm listening to it. So I hear Kiki now, why are you peeping me? Everybody knows that I'm a G. The old Pat in the back. Hey, hey. You know, he had that old growl, gorilla growl like sound. So I just come in the back of him and say, why are you still peeping me? So, and he said, yeah, that's what I kind of want. I said, okay, cool. So that's how that went. And I would just go down every now and then. And I hit some high notes and some low notes. And, and they was like, man, that's all I kept hearing. Man, I said, okay, so I guess that's what they liked. So when they recorded it, it was cool. The album was dead. But Rick kept playing peeping me. So Pat like, you know what? We need to take that off the album. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Rex said, what do you mean? He said, man, that boy there, man. That he going to oh, shine me on my own shit. Yeah, they they going to be looking at that boy, not me. <laughs> so, so, so Rex said, man, the album going to move, man. It's just leave it alone. He said, all right, man. But that, man, that, that boy super thawed on that peeping me. So, <laughs> so uh, Kiki like, that's that boy with that thaw thawk. That's what Kiki used to always say. That boy got that, th that boy with that thaw thawk. And everybody turns and say, that, that is that dude. He said, yeah, that boy got that throat, throat. So, so, and I'm like, I'm like, these guys are trip. These guys is, but they really was actors and don't know they actors. Nobody in the screwed up clique knew they was going to be big, knew they was going to be successful. They was doing this shit for fun. Standing in the middle of the screw house with a microphone up, he mixing it. He, Kiki will come in, then he leave out, then Pat will come in, then he leave out, then c -Note will come in, then he leave out, then Pokey will come in. That's the way it was. Now, Aldea come in, and he out, and here you go, youngster, you know. And that's what started the whole thing, and it's just they didn't know nothing about publishing. I didn't. Nobody did. We were just doing it for fun. It was really a hobby until it just, when it just got so strong, you know, somebody making money. There's something going on. There's something we don't know. 
And that's when everybody realized it wasn't the upfront money, it was the publishing. That's where your money was. And you know, you know when you get to money, a lot of people don't tell you the real. And that's what happened. But now these guys know the real. They all doing good. They all getting their publishing. They all got nice houses. And I'm proud of all of those guys that stayed in and this long to really just take a beating in the industry, not knowing where their money was. And now these guys got lawyers. They start reading books. They know what, what it is. They know where their money at. They got their publishing straight. And they getting what deserved to them. Mm. And that's just how that happened. Yeah. Danny Houston. Danny Houston.